Okay, well, good morning and welcome to Fridays with Fiscal. Um, today we are going to be talking about AP invoices. Um, I kind of have a more specific topic that um, we're going to hone in on with this. Um, before we get started, though, I think I may have clicked a button that muted everyone earlier. So if you um, have any questions throughout, of course, let me know. If you are muted, I believe your button in the bottom left corner will unmute you. So um, you just might need to click that. Um, all right, so with the AP invoices, let me just go ahead and start on the wiki like I always do. And I'm going to go into our AP invoices page here. So it's under transactions and AP invoices. And what I'm going to focus on today is pretty much um, one of our top asked questions that relate to invoices, and that's talking about um, reopening or closing a PO by changing the invoice status between partial and full. Uh, we're going to talk about how that impacts reports and accounts, and um, basically whether it's in a current period or in a previous period and the impact of that. So I do have a section for each uh, reopen and close uh, purchase order using the invoice. And so there's a section with some screenshots for each um, of these, uh, the basic like functions that we're going to talk about with this. So I'm signed into USAS and um, I just want to take a look. Let's start by looking at our, in, at our invoice and see uh, where those buttons are. Going into the AP invoice page and then I have a transaction here that I know I want to use. So I'm just going to click the I to view. And when I'm in view mode, these actions over here these buttons are what is going to control um, if changing the status basically of my invoice item. Basically what we're seeing right now is the actual status, the current status of each item is um, in this section. So both of these line items are invoiced with a full status, so they're closed. So this, these, those are the only two items on this PO. So this is a closed PO right now. And if I wanted to uh, reopen one of these line items, I would click the partial um, button over here to take the action to make this partial. Now um, I'm going to, we're going to slide to the activity ledger and I'm going to look at um, kind of this full transaction and we'll kind of walk through what happens if we change that status and how that will affect it. Um, but the reason that I want to talk about this is um, we've gotten a lot of questions about it, but it's also because it's something that works differently than Classic. Um, in Classic, you had the VAR invoice program and at any point in time, the district could go in and change a line item from full to partial and then pay on it again. Um, now in Classic, the uh, encumbrance amounts on the accounts, those were all static. Those were all um, basically a bank that was updated when transactions happened. And then at the end of the month, when adjust is run, the adjust clears out any month to date figures. At the end of the month, you also um, took a snapshot of all of your reports and saved those somewhere. Um, the difference that we're seeing in redesign is now you have the ability to go run a report on the fly for a previous period. So because you have that ability, because you have that perk with redesign to go be able to regenerate reports or to look at a point in time within your system, um, that's why it has to be a little bit more strict with these rules. So the question that we get a lot is, you know, why can't I reopen, um, why can't I reopen this because the invoice is in a prior period? And um, that's basically what, what we're going to kind of look at. We'll get to the error, but first I want to kind of talk through what this does in the current period. So I want to point out that I am in January. My period for January is also open, so that's my open current period. And I have an invoice here, or a PO here that I'm going to use, so let me grab that. So I'm just on the activity ledger, I'm going to filter it down to just see any transactions related to my PO. 
and then let's filter this by date and by my item. So just to kind of get an overview of what we're looking at here, this is kind of the full chain of my transaction so far. I have my lines for the PO. So this PO was originally uh, line item one was for $400. Line item two was for $600. That happened back in July. Then in January, line item one was invoiced for 200 and then line item two was for 600 So that's the invoice we just looked at. Um, we can see that both of these were a full status. But line item one didn't necessarily use the full encumbered amount. Now there's not going to be any remaining encumbrance though because it is closed. And um, just so we get a full scope, I want to kind of look at, um, want to make sure we look at the purchase order too, just so we have an idea here so we can kind of see all the pieces. And let me find my PO. We'll go ahead and view this. All right, so now we're looking at the PO that we just saw in that activity ledger. I have my item totals here. Line item one was $400. Line item two was 600 that gave me an original PO total of $1,000. So when I started this PO, that would have been my, my full encumbrance. Um, I had $800 paid on it, but I didn't pay the full amount. So um, because it's closed, I still have $0 remaining encumbrance right now. The other thing I want to note here is, um, again, the original date on this PO is in July. What Redesign is going to use from this PO when generating reports or um, adding amounts to the account page is it's going to say, all right, starting in July, these encumbrances were added. I'm going to include those encumbrances all the way until I have a transaction that has a full status, an invoice that has a full status. For any of the months in between, I'm going to show that encumbrance as open. All right, so let's go ahead and start making changes now. I'm going to um, go ahead and get myself a new tab so that we don't have to keep switching pages. We can kind of just switch uh, tabs back and forth. Actually, all right, so let's open, this is going to be our invoice that we were looking at. So see, here's my 200, my 600. So those are my two line items from my purchase order. And you know what, let's look at one more thing here um, because I want, to, I want to show how this impacts your account and we'll compare. So I'm going to my core accounts page, and um, we'll take a look at the expenditure account. I'm going to be changing the status on line item one because that's the one that still would have had a remaining encumbrance. So we're going to start focusing really just on that line item here. Okay, so now I'm on my accounts page. I'm switching to my expenditure um, accounts grid. And I have the account written down from that first line item, so I'm just going to go ahead and get that pulled up here. All right, so when we take a look here, um, this one, it just so happens that the only amount that I expended out of this account, the only amount I paid was that $200. Um, so that's what I'm seeing from that disbursement that's tied to my invoice. And then I have an encumbered amount here. So right now, you know, we can't really 
see too much. I mean, we could probably we could run a report that would show you know what's going into this figure. But um, what we're going to want to do is take note of that because once we change the status, we're going to look at how that changes. So that encumbered amount is the current remaining encumbrances associated with this account code um, that are open, open basically, the remaining. All right, and I hope I'm not switching around too much here. I just I want to I like using the separate tabs because then we don't have to re-navigate to the page each time. Um, so I'll try and make sure that I'm still <laughs> noting where we're at. Um, so I'm back on my invoice. So this is my AP invoices page. And I just want to make sure I hit everything. All right, so let's go ahead. Um, I'm going to change this first line item from full to partial, and that will reopen it. Click that action button. It's as simple as that. I get a little pop-up that says invoice updated, and I can see that my partial status changed here, or my full status changed to partial. So that wasn't, wasn't really that eventful, but let's go look and see what that did. Um, I'm flipping to my first tab here, so this is my purchase order, and just to be safe, I like to refresh the page when I make changes, make sure everything goes into effect. And let me go ahead, I'm going to look at this PO again. And I can see a couple things right off the bat. So I have my invoice button back here. So now I would be able to invoice this again. It's reopened. Um, I also have a remaining encumbrance of $200. So that is the remaining 200 that was on my line item one. So just by changing that status, I've now um, reopened this so that I can pay on it again. I'm switching back to my accounts page. Let's refresh this one too, just to be safe. All right, so now when we pull up this account, I still only have the $200 expended, but my encumbered amount changed here. So this was $28.10 before. Um, just for the sake of viewing this, I did go ahead and make a little document so that we can actually see the difference side by side. Um, so this is what we looked at before. That encumbered amount was $28.10. Now just by changing that to partial, it's now um, 3010 So it added that $200 as available encumbrance to my account. Now at this stage, we are in the current period. January is current. January is open. This is all okay. This is what it would do within a normal month. Um, it's just kind of looking at how the system is using those transactions and using something as simple as changing from full to partial um, and what that's going to impact. Let's look at one more thing here. Um, I think we are safe to get out of this account page. Um, the other thing I mentioned that it impacts are the reports. So the figures that we saw on um, that account page. Uh, let me grab this here. So the figures that we're seeing here, these are used when you run a report. So we're looking at the expenditure account here. Um, if I were to run a budget summary report, the figures that are included on this screenshot are things that would be included in my budget summary report. Um, that becomes important because I can go back and run those and use that as of period to pull those figures from a prior period too. The other one that it impacts is this outstanding purchase orders. This report is actually a really cool report because it will always look at the outstanding um, purchase orders based on the current period. 
Um, if you need to go back and get um, a list of outstanding purchase orders, say for like June of last year, you need to see it for the end of the last fiscal year. You don't have to reopen June, but if you make June your current period and run this report, it will be able to see what was open in that specific period. So this is also impacted by what we're talking about here, by the status um, and changes in invoices. Um, I have this report narrowed down to just show the PO that we're working with. So let's take a look and see what that would look like. At this point, we have the remaining encumbrance of $200. So we're seeing it on here with that available um, for my current January period. All right, so let's go ahead, let's close it back up now, and then I'm going to run this report again so we can kind of compare. You know, now we're going the opposite way. Um, I'm back to my invoice page. I still kind of had this open in the background. Um, again, I'm in view, so that eyeball icon. Um, and I'm partial status, so let's make this full again, close it back up. That'll um, make our PO so it's not invoiceable anymore. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and run. I just went back to the main page, and I'm going to run this outstanding purchase order report again. Again, I'm just running it for that one PO, and I get nothing. Now, that's because I um, don't uh, – I only have it for that one PO. So um, if I ran this for all the POs, then it wouldn't um, be included, basically, is what we're seeing. <laughs> And I did get a question here. Um, it, can you run a report in a prior period? You only need to have um, you only need to have it the current period, but it doesn't have to be open. That is definitely correct. Um, let's go back to the wiki here because I believe we have some notes on this. So if you're going back to do it later, uh, let's go to. I go to the report manager. I'm looking for our template reports here. And um, I'm just going to grab outstanding purchase orders. This is the report that I'm looking at. You can temporarily change your current period to the period um, that you want to have that information reflect. And absolutely, you do not have to open it to do that. Just make it current. Okay, so we've looked at so we've looked at our purchase order reports. Um, we've looked at the account and how that um, is updated. So let's see. Um, so at this point, we've been looking at this being our current period um, and our open period. So what if what if this you know what if we weren't in January basically? Um, I'm going to go to posting periods. Let's close January, and let's make February current. Now I can run reports on prior periods without opening them, but there are changes, of course, that I can't make um, to certain transactions if that period is no longer open. And that's where I think we run into a lot of questions um, with changing the status and things like that because um, if the period is closed, then you are going to get an error if you try and change this invoice status. So I'm sorry, I didn't mean to click so many things right there. Um, but I just grabbed my middle tab. I'm back to AP invoices. And I'm going to pull up view mode of that same invoice we've been looking at. And I think I might need to refresh my page. See? Should have done it just to be safe. Okay. So we pulled this up. Now let's say uh, we want to do just what we did before. Um, we know that we have $200 left on that first line item. Um, 
the district wants to make another payment on this PO, they want to use that remaining $200, so they want to go ahead and reopen this first line. Um, if I go ahead and click this, now I'm going to get an error. And it says, unable to update the invoice because the associated posting period is closed. Um, basically, even though I'm in February now, if I were to be able to change that, it is still going to update all of those things that we saw. It's going to update the account figures. It's going to update that purchase order report related to January. And that's something that the districts may or may not want to do. Um, and we'll talk about, I do have some notes on what does this mean for processing, so we'll get there. Let me just make sure that I'm covering what I want to before that. Ah, so I want to mention in the context of um, we are looking at, this is January. You know, this one's from January. I just moved to February. If you do have this situation and it's in, say this was in September, the invoice is from September, it's going to change the account figures for that month and every month in between. So that's something important to note as well um, when we get to the part where we evaluate if this is something that the district may or may not want to um, allow. So yeah, let's hop to it then. What does this mean for processing? Um, and I would say uh, it's really up to the district how they want to handle this process. Um, you know, of course, if a district, you know, if they want to reopen a PO, I mean, the answer for how to do it is that they can reopen that prior period and they can do it. The system will allow them to. Um, but I think what it comes down to is how strict the district is with um, their monthly figures versus fiscal figures. Um, you know, if they're doing this within a certain fiscal year, it all makes sense. They're really not doing anything that they weren't doing before. The difference is that they can actually generate reports that will show the difference now. Um, so if they're concerned that their auditors are looking at things on a monthly basis and they do not want those figures to change, um, then they may not want to reopen a prior month to change the status because it would change their figures. Um, I know, uh, so I guess if, if they didn't want to do that, the alternative route, um, instead of reopening this, is I would make a new PO for my $200 that can be dated in my current month. That way it can be added to all the proper places um, and associated with this month. Now, if they do that, there is a chance that that's going to be a then and now. Um, and I know that the you know so the invoice date would be um, earlier than the PO, and that's something that the district would have to get approved by their board. Amanda, um, yes. Hi, this is Rhonda from HCC. Um, hey, we Rhonda. Have this. Hi, how are you today? Um, <laughs> we've had this um, discussion, um, and there's like one district in particular, and they always seem to be crossing that month. Um, you know that that threshold there, and they've closed like say January, and they've got. Um, you know, something in, in February, but, you know, they were in February, but they want to do something in January. So um, we just um, caution them that um, if they're going to go back and reopen that month, they might want to get their, um, their monthly reports uh, deleted off the monthly CD. So um, when they regenerate and reclose that month, they'll only have one set of reports. Because if they have multiple yes. reports, if they do this a lot, it gets very confusing. I think that's a great note. Thanks for thanks for adding that, Rhonda. Um, and and I think that that's that's kind of why I wanted to have this discussion. And please, if anybody else has practices or um, thoughts about this, this can be a discussion. Um, you know, because if they, I wanted to have this discussion so that. Um, this is something you guys are aware of going into, you know, your trainings. We are kind of open about how this works because I think that if the district plans for it, and that's a perfect example, if they know that this is something that, you know, they may allow just within the previous month, then they can go ahead and say, all right, I'm going to just update my reports on the monthly CD if I do this. 
Um, the other idea, too, is, you know, maybe they'll leave January open longer. Maybe, you know, they usually balance and close it, but maybe they leave it open until, you know, later in the month because now they can have two periods open. That's something they could never do before. Um, I know a lot of districts don't like to do that, you know, either because there is a little bit of, like, process. Um, but it's just kind of figuring out ideas and what works for the district. Um, the other thing that I was thinking is, you know, this seems like a really big um, difference in kind of practice. So some districts don't run into this very often because when it's closed, it's closed. Um, but some districts are used to just being able to close them and I'll open it if I need it. And then I don't have to worry about it if I don't need it. Um, so maybe if this is something that they know, hey, I can't just go reopen this um, without affecting my figures. Maybe I will leave these open if I'm not sure. Um, and then I can close it when I know I'm definitely not going to charge anything else on it. Um, let's see. Ah, so I do have another question too. Um, how do you know which month to open? Um, and I believe this is related to the invoice. So if I wanted to, um, if I get the error for this one because I want to reopen it, or you know, we're talking about I get that error because it's in a prior period, it's going to go by the invoice date, not the PO date. It'll be the invoice date because the system's trying to figure when that encumbrance should have gone away or still been there. Um, so it would be the invoice date here, and then um, this page, I'm on my posting period, so I got here from my core posting period page. All right, I also want to talk about closing a PO, but before we kind of move on to that, does anybody else have um, any other thoughts or like any um, experiences with your districts in regards to this, in regards to, um, you know, reopening the periods, how they um, have handled that or thought about it? Okay. I did get another one in the chat here, um, kind of a suggestion uh, for the reports that they would show. Um, maybe what period they ran for um, on the outstanding purchase order report. I think, let's see. Yeah, I'm not sure that that would, if we have the options page, I'm not sure that that would show anything. Uh, Amanda, this is Dia. I was thinking that it did. That was, I was just going to mention that. All right, let's see. Let's run this real quick. Because I guess technically, I'm not putting in like an as of period. Yeah, let's, let's go ahead and try this. So I just clicked this show report options and that'll give me sort of a cover page. I didn't really check to see how many outstanding POs I had, so it might take a minute, sorry. And I mean, we'll see what's on our cover page, but my other thought, and I know this would still kind of be, you know, they'd have to like note what period, but they could also like add to the name. You know, if they change this name here, this will change the heading on the report. So um, I know that's a manual step, but that is another option that they could do outside of having to like print out the report and, you know, um, make a note on it. They could actually have it be part of the report through the system. All right, well, I'm going to go ahead, let's let that run. Um, 
let me go. Let me go to my first tab here. Let me just go ahead. I'm going to refresh my PO grid too and see. Because that's where we're going next. So I'll kind of let this load at the same time. All right. So um, in a little bit similar manner, just talking about closing a PO. Now, um, there are definitely options where you can, um, instead of like what we just did was, you know, changing from full to partial would reopen it. Uh, you can change from partial to full to close a PO. Uh, now that does abide by the same rule where the posting period associated with the invoice would have to be open in order to do that. Um, and there's been a bit of discussion about this too uh, because there are some cases where it's recommended to do that. Um, but really what I think it comes down to is um, if there's a remaining encumbrance on uh, the purchase order and um, on that line item and then the date. And I have my report pop up here real quick, so let's do this. I think the top oh, yeah. left. Yeah. 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 So I do have a posting period up there. So, and that should go by because in order to generate this for a previous um, posting period, I actually have to change that current posting period. So it should, um, so that would update if you're in a prior, um, if you changed current and you're running it, say, you know, for June of 2019. Amanda, your options page also shows if you put dates in, it will show the mm -hmm. system start date and system end date um, that you okay. entered as far as your uh, report parameters and your query parameters on the on your options Excellent. page. Yeah, and this one took a minute, so I probably should have put in some more parameters. But yeah, that second, that middle query parameters um, tab when you're generating the report, if you put in any of those options, it will show on this page. So. Just like that um, options option in classic, when you would say, you know, show the options at the top. This is kind of your same idea. Thanks, Dee. All right, so let's hop back to POs. Um, so what I would say is, if you have a purchase order that was created in a prior period and uh, there is a remaining encumbrance on it, then um, honestly at this point I would recommend doing the cancel full. Um, darn it. Go ahead and pull one up here so we can look, look while I'm talking. I <laughs> um, feel like it's a little bit better to have an example here. So this purchase order is now from January, which is closed. Um, I have my remaining encumbrance amount on here. And so say I want to close this. Because it still has um, a remaining encumbrance amount, we wanted that to be open in January, but we want to show that it's now gone in February. So what I would do is go ahead and click to invoice this. Database is having the Friday blues here. There we go. Okay. So I'll give it an invoice number, and I don't know which one I've used, so we're just going to pick a random one. And then um, it defaults to my current date. Um, I could add like a vendor invoice date or payment due date. Actually, I'm canceling, so I wouldn't want to do that in this case necessarily. I mean, I don't, I don't believe I would. Um, if I go ahead and click to cancel this, it'll be a cancel full status for the full amount. So because I have a remaining encumbrance um, and I want to close that out, that's just basically the same thing as what you would do in Classic. Um, I go ahead and save this up and now my PO is going to be closed. Um, entering it this way, so this allows the reports 
um, to remain consistent, um, any periods in between that would have been opened until you know you now have the full uh, the transaction that closes that and um, take takes away the remaining encumbrance. Now this can be different if you're looking at a transaction in the current period. So let me go back. It looks to switch me to my um, invoices page when I invoice, so I'm going to have to go back to the purchase order page real quick here. Um, if you're in the current period and you have a purchase order that has no payments, you can amend to cancel that line item. So uh, for this one, let me grab another PO here. So this one actually has a February date for my current period. Um, I have my one line item here. And if I were to amend this and cancel, and I just click that little X at the beginning of the line here, and then I could save this, and sometimes my test database doesn't like when I do certain things, so um, I may have already tested on that too. Mm. But that would be your basic steps. So. Um, Again, you would just amend and then click the X. Sorry about that. Um, the reason I can do that in the current period is because um, you know it's going to go ahead and um, I mean everything I guess that I'm affecting as far as my reports and my accounts. Um, if I were to go back and run on a prior period, everything happened within the same period, so um, that's okay to do. We do have a JIRA issue um, right now where you should be able to amend to cancel items that haven't been paid on, even if it wasn't a prior period. Uh, right now it will give you an error if you try and do that, but in the future um, the plan is that you would be able to amend to cancel an item if it has not been paid on. Amanda, um, this is Misty. Yeah. This is Misty yeah. from Memories. Quick question on that. Sure. What would be the difference of amending a purchase order to cancel the item versus just going to invoice and canceling it from there? Um, if you're doing it like what we just looked at with the within the current period, it, it's pretty much the same. Okay. Yeah. I just wondered if there was some difference and we should be doing it through the amend process versus just going to the invoice and canceling it. Right. Well, the part one, it actually does make a difference. We're going to get to talking about $0 POs. And I think in that case, if there's no remaining encumbrance, that's really when you kind of want to consider it as a difference. Um, in general, you know, with the redesign, everything's calculating on, you know, all of your transactions. So I guess, I mean, you know, obviously you're going to end up with a lot of transactions either way, so who knows how many canceled transactions you'd really end up having in the long run. But technically if you're amending, rather than making another, you know, making a cancel invoice and making another transaction in your system, that's sort of kind of less for less transactions to go through, I guess, but um, that's really not that big of a deal. So in this case you could do either. Okay, thank you. No problem. Um, if you are in the current period and you have um, a purchase order line item that uh, has payments on it already, so the amend can be used when you don't have payments. If you have payments and you're in the current period and you know the payment was in the current period, then you just go change that invoice status like we looked at earlier. Um, basically what we saw when we were in January, you would go ahead, change it from um, partial to full, and then it would just close your purchase order that way. Now, there is a difference that comes in as far as recommended processing when it does have to do with the $0 purchase orders. Uh, let me pull up, let me find this one. So sometimes there are, oh man, I thought that I had added another line for this one. You know what, let's go ahead. I'm going to just add this now.
So the example that I wanted to talk about, goodness. Okay, well, I'm really sorry. I'm not sure what's going on here. Um, of course, this happens, you know, when we're all here together on training. <laughs> That's how it goes. Um, so let's just talk it through then. Um, what can happen is districts will make another line item for $0, and they might do that when the PO is created, and it'll just start as $0 because they don't know if they're going to have shipping or not. Um, so they'll have that second line item, and that way if they have shipping, the right account is connected, and then they can go ahead and enter that shipping in and process it. Um, the other thing that can happen sometimes is you might have a line item that was for a total of $100, and they paid $100, but they put a partial status instead of full. And so they used all of the encumbrances, so there's nothing left. Um, but they didn't actually close it. Now, when you run into those situations, that is where it's not necessarily recommended to make that cancel invoice because you're making a transaction for no amount, you know, and, and that's something that just like in the system, it doesn't really make sense. It doesn't necessarily hurt anything. So if your districts want, like if they're really strong and they want to do that, um, they can. There's a warning that pops up, but it is an optional warning um, that can be disabled. Um, but just as far as like from a system standpoint, our recommendation is to avoid making transactions for zero dollars. Um, so the alternative options in that case would be um, if you do have the case where you have shipping, it was never paid on and it's zero dollars then the recommendation for that would be to go ahead and amend um, that line item and cancel it by amending. If you have the case where it was previously paid on, so you paid $100 out of $100 but it's partial, um, the recommendation in that case would be to update the invoice and make it full. Now, depending on the dates on those transactions, both of those options could require opening a prior period. And I know we just talked all about how you might not want to do that and how that will affect the reports, but it is different when you're talking about a $0 difference. Um, if you are closing something that doesn't have a remaining encumbrance, it actually will not affect your reports. Because when we looked at, you know, the difference on these accounts, you know, the difference we're seeing was our $200. If that difference is zero, it actually wouldn't, it wouldn't change anything. Um, so that's why that it's an exception when it's for $0. And we had some notes on one of our previous releases, and this is why I wanted to, to talk about this because I think that this um, may have caused some confusion. 7.2, um, 6.1, we had this little blurb about, um, you know, for $0 invoices, you know, here is kind of the intended ways to handle. So the important thing is that this applies specifically to $0. And, um, you know, still the case for, you know, when you have a remaining encumbrance um, that, you know, you want to be careful with reopening the prior periods. Um, so just kind of wanted to, to make a note of that. Um, because there's a lot going on with those. <laughs> All right. So that about covers it. Um, I know we kind of looked at a lot of different pages. We hopped around a bit. So, um, does anybody have any other questions or comments about anything that we talked about today? This is Nancy at NOACA. Hi, Nancy. Um, do you, is there plans to, for the outstanding purchase order, what about adding that total as a period to that report so you w they wouldn't have to go back and make a previous period current? 
like it's in like in but some you know um well so in the budget summary it's using the figures right from the account page um yeah and then until so it can go by that as of period i think the difficulty with um doing that for the outstanding purchase orders is that it's actually showing you all of the transactions and their status at that time so what they did in order to create this report was they had to make a special field that showed like the current outstanding for the current period um honestly i'm not really sure if it's something that's possible but at this point like it is it's kind of complex so that's mm -hmm. the reason for it is the field that it pulls off of. Um, it, it's just kind of different to be able to show, to show the individual transactions. Okay. Anyone else? All right, well, um, I know we talked through a lot. I hope that this was helpful. Um, I hope that, you know, going into, um, you know, your Wave 5 trainings and for your current districts, that this can be something that um, can kind of help game plan how you and your districts want to um, handle this. And of course, if you guys have other questions um, about this that you think about later, feel free to um, send us in a ticket. I'm happy to, to uh, discuss more. Um, also, you guys, there's a lot of, um of these frequently asked questions um, regarding POs and invoices are out there documented underneath the appendix. So, you know, please reference that um, for your districts so they know that a lot of the stuff that um, Amanda just talked about is out there. Um, <clears throat> so um, just keep that in mind when you're doing your trainings. And I did get one more question as a follow up to talking about the zero dollar encumbrance um, when talking about that the invoice is paid um, but the to but the status was entered as partial um, you'll change the status for that um, by modifying the, uh, so the question was do you change it by modifying the invoice or by changing the status of the po line item so um, you'll change the status on on the invoice so this is the case where um, if i had zero dollars um, to say you know this was partial but this was for um, the full amount of the original invoice, I would just come in here and change it to full. And then that would close it. So it's on the invoice. And then also the appendix. Um, so in the appendix, we're looking at the FAQs. Michelle, is that what you were mentioning? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, right under the appendix here, we have this FAQ page, and then we have um, a section for um, kind of each type of transaction. We have a category in there for each thing. All right, well, that is all I have. Um, I'll hang out for another minute in case anyone has additional questions, but thank you guys so much. I hope you have a great weekend. You too, Amanda. Thank you.